Well, we're going to wrap up our series and sequences with geometric series word problems. So a lot of these word problems involve exponential growth and decay, which is something we've talked about a while ago. So our first question is, what are the formulas for exponential growth and decay, and what do the variables represent in each formula? So let's just kind of review here. Growth versus decay. Um, so we're going to start with our amount equals the amount present times 1 plus the rate to the time. And if it's decay, our amount equals the amount present times 1 minus the rate to the time. So we know if this number is bigger than 1, it was growth. And if this number was smaller than 1 as a whole, it was decay. So A represents that final amount. Sorry about the pen. Um, and P represents the initial amount. R, of course, is your rate, and T stands for time. So again, that should all just be a quick review. Question two, a computer valued at $6,500 depreciates at the rate of 14.3% per year. A, write a function that models the value of the computer after n years. So depreciates means that it's losing value, so we know it's decaying. So let's start with our formula. A equals the initial amount, so 6,500. We know it's going to be 1 minus the rate. Now that's a percentage, so the rate is actually two decimals to the left, 0.143, raised to the n, since it said n represents years instead of t. Um, and then typically we clean this up. We'll clean up this inside amount. So we'll say that amount equals, and I'm just using my calculator to clean that up, of course, 0.857 raised to the n. Now, what do you have to take note of? This is similar to that geometric formula, where a sub n equals a sub 1 times the ratio to the n minus 1. Kind of compare. There's a sub 1, the initial amount. We have our ratio to the n minus 1. Part B says find the value of the computer after three years. Well, I'm literally just going to plug 3 into my equation. So A equals that 6,500 times 0.857 raised to the third. And again, just plug and chug in your calculator. I get $4,091.25. Question three, write a geometric sequence that has the first term of 36 and a common ratio of one third. So geometric means we're multiplying, of course. Um, and I'm gonna start with things I know. A sub one is equal to 36, my first term. My ratio is one third. Um, and that's all that I'm given at the moment and that's usually all I need. Now it says write a geometric series. Remember, series means that you're finding a sum of numbers using Sn s sub n to represent the sum over n terms. So this is a formula we talked about the other day and we said in fact it's given to you on the exam. So it was a sub 1 minus a sub 1 r to the n all over 1 minus r. So all I have to do is carefully plug these numbers in. So s sub n equals my a sub 1, so that's 36 minus 36 times my ratio of 1 third to the n, because it said keep it in terms of n, all over 1 minus 1 third. Part B says use this formula to find the sum of the first 15 terms. So now in place of that n, I'm putting in 15 because I want the first 15 terms. So 36 minus 36 to the one, times 1 third to the 15th, all over 1 minus 1 third. Now again, I mean, if you wanted, you could sit there and write out 15 terms. You could just keep taking 36 and multiplying by a third, write out all 15 and add them together. But this formula is supposed to be a quicker method for you to get those 15 terms. Um, and again, I'm just using alpha y equals, and I'm carefully typing this in my calculator. If you have that old 83 without the alpha y equals, highly suggest you type the top in, hit enter, write it down, type the bottom in, hit enter, and write it down, and then divide those two. You cannot do it all on one line. I'm getting 53.999, <coughs> oh, I think I get a 624 at the end there. All right, so here's the big questions of the day. 
geometric sequences that deal with percentages. And these are where our word problems usually come in. So let's get this all copied down. To find any term of a geometric sequence, we're going to use this formula that we've talked about for four days now, where a sub n is the nth term, a sub 1 is the first, r is the ratio. Now here's our, our couple big ideas here. If a question, that's a little dark, sorry. If a question refers to a percentage, this means we are dealing with a geometric sequence. Two, when given a percentage, the common ratio of the percentage remaining of the previous term. So slow down and get those type written out carefully. All right, let's look at example A. Again, let's have this written out. A certain water filtration system can remove 70% of the contaminants each time a sample of water is passed through it. Notice the word removed. Highlight that for yourself. That is a big indication that this is decay. Something's being removed. So how am I going to start my, my formula? Well, I know it's going to be 1 minus the rate. So I'm going to say it's 1 minus 0 0.70. So my ratio that I'm going to use is going to be 0 0.30. Okay, so why did I do that? Let me go through it again. Remove means it's decay. We just talked about growth and decay. It's the amount times the initial amount times 1 minus the rate to the t. So to figure out this ratio, I have to do 1 minus the rate. So 1 minus 7, 0.70 equals 0 0.30. Let's try the next one. John's salary earns an increase of 4% each successive year. Keyword being increase. Okay, something's going to increase its growth. So I'm going to say my ratio is 1 plus the rate. So I'm going to do 1 plus, be careful, 0.04. So my ratio is 1.04. Question 3. A basketball is dropped vertically. So picture holding a basketball over your head and you drop it. The height of each subsequent bounce is 90% of the previous bounce. So when you drop this basketball, it's not going to bounce higher than it did the first time. It's going to bounce less each time. Um, and it's 90% of its previous bounce. So again, I would say this is decay. Notice I'm identifying that each time. Now this one's a little trickier. If I'm losing 90% of each bounce, how much are you actually decreasing by? Let's put a big star here. If I, let me repeat that again, I'm 90% of the previous bounce. I'm actually decaying by 10%. Okay, so I need to make sure you rationalize that in your head. If I'm 90% of the previous bounce, I only went down by 10%. Therefore, I'm going to do 1 minus my rate, so 1 minus my 0.10. I'm going to say my ratio this time is 0 0.90. So a little trickier on the last one. So that's why I want to make sure we have all three written down and we can rationalize through them. All right, next example. A fan is running 10 revolutions per second. After it is turned off, its speed decreases at a rate of 75% per second. So how do I know where to go? I want you to box this in here. This de oops. decreases at a rate. This has to be screaming at you. This is a geometric problem. Okay, and that's our goal today, is to identify where these problems come in, these word problems. When it says it's decreasing at a rate, we know that it's geometric. And the first part says find an explicit formula. Now remember, those will be given, but you should know them. We've done them enough that you should kind of have them memorized. So I'm going explicit for geometric. So right off the bat, I'm saying, okay, I always start with a sub 1. Geometric means to multiply. I need a ratio to the n minus 1. Okay, now how am I going to get that ratio? So that's what we just reviewed. Our ratio is, is this growth or decay? Well, decreases tells me decay. So I know it's 1 minus the rate. So in this case, I'm going to say it's 1 minus 0.75. So my ratio is 0.25. Now remember, you need two things. You need a ratio and you need a sub 1. Well, it started running at 10 revolutions per second. So I know that a sub 1 is equal to 10. So now I can plug it in my formula. a sub 1 times the ratio 
to the n minus 1. Again, if we go too fast, make sure you pause it and go back. These word problems are key on our exam. Okay, suppose you drop a tennis ball from a height of 15 feet. So guess what a sub 1 is. After the ball hits the floor, it rebounds to 85% of its previous height. So here again, they should be screaming geometric. Write an explicit formula for the sequence. So again, I'm going to start with my formula. a sub n equals a sub 1 ratio to the n minus 1. I already know a sub 1. So this is kind of similar to that tricky one. I know it's decay because it's decreasing. So I know my ratio is 1 minus the rate. So I know I'm going to say it's 1 minus. Now, what is the rate that it decreases by? If I rebound to 85% of my previous height, what did I decrease by? Hopefully, in your head, you've already said I've 100% minus 85%. I've decreased by 15%, so I'm going to subtract 0.15. So I'm going to say my ratio is actually 0.85. And then I'm going to put it together to write that equation. A sub n equals 15 times 0.85 to the n minus 1. All right, we'll change it up again. Geometric series word problems now. So again, a series is the sum, what you get when you add a bunch of terms together. So S sub n is the sum of the first n terms. A sub 1 is the first term. R is the ratio. George has taken a job with a starting salary of $50,000. So guess what they're telling you? If you start there, that is your A sub 1. He receives an annual raise of 2%. Well, if you have a raise, would you say that's growth or decay? Hopefully, you've already said growth. How much are you going, growing by? 2%. Write a geometric series formula for S sub n for George's total earnings over n years. Okay, so let's think about what we need. We need A sub 1 and we need a ratio. So because this is growth, my ratio is 1 plus the rate. So I'm going to say my ratio, this R standing for ratio, sorry, is going to be 1 plus 0.0. Two. All right, which obviously you can add and get 1.02. So I'm going to carefully plug these in my formula. So it's a sub 1, 50,000 minus another a sub 1, 50,000 times my ratio, which we just said is 1.02 to the n, all over 1 minus 1.02. Okay, so now it says using this formula, find George's total earnings after this first 12 years to the nearest cent. Well, that's easy enough. All I'm going to do is replace all those little ends with the number 12. So I've got my 50,000 minus 50,000, 1.02 to the 12th, all over 1 minus 1.02. And again, Really be careful in your calculator. If you have the fraction tool, this shouldn't be an issue whatsoever. Um, just on those old 83 calculators, type in the top, type in the bottom, and divide. So to the nearest cent, uh, this is what I've got. 670,604.49. All right. The first swing of a pendulum travels 40 centimeters. Each subsequent swing travels 95% as far as the previous swing. All right, so your goal is deposit, and I want you to come up with a sub 1 and the common ratio, and then write it in the formula. The formula is on your paper already, um, and just slow down and see what you get. Uh, but you got to be able to do these on your own, so pause it, good luck, and then compare with mine. All right, so again, the only tricky part to me here was that ratio itself. Um, take note that it said it traveled 95% as the previous swing. So you have to ask yourself, obviously it's decaying, but by what? So if I subtract this number from 100, it's decaying by 5% or 0.05. So my first term was 40. My ratio was 1 minus the rate it's decaying, 0.05, so I get 0.95. And then I just carefully plugged it in the formula. 
and then use this formula per to predict the pendulum's total distance after the 30th swing. So again, I'm just going to replace all my ends with a 30 and a little plug and chug in the calculator. And we've got ourselves an answer. But obviously the answer doesn't mean anything if you can't step up and write that formula. Um, so take your time as you're writing that. Just make sure you keep saying, what am I decreasing by or increasing by? All right, a little friendlier one, kind of putting it all together. A car with an original price of $30,000 depreciates by 30% each year. Write an explicit formula for the car. So let's take care of the obvious things. A sub 1 equals 30,000. Okay, do I know the rate it's depreciating? Okay, so again, this is decay, depreciating, it's losing value. And we already, they're already telling us it's decaying by 30%. So it's nice and easy when they tell you what the percentage is. So my ratio is going to be 1 minus the rate of decay, which is 30%. So I'm going to say my ratio is 0.7. So write an explicit formula. I'm just going to carry it down here for a minute. A sub n equals A sub 1, ratio 0.7 raised to the n minus 1. Done. Part B, write a recursive formula. This is the one you got to have memorized. You have to state two things in recursive. You always have to state A sub 1. So let's get that out of the way. $30,000. Now recursive is pretty straightforward. You're always saying previous term. To get the previous term, you use n minus 1. And then because of the ratio, it's times, and in this case, 0.7. And we're done there. Let's go ahead and add one more part. Um, let's say part C says, find the S sub n. So we'll use that formula, S sub n. Um, and we'll just kind of plug and chug. So it was A sub 1, which is 30,000 minus 30,000 times the rate, 0.7 to the n all over 1 minus 0.7. And again, they would tell you what n is, or they tell you to keep it in terms of n. Well, I think that does it for our word problems. Um, some of them can be really straightforward, especially when they give you the rate of decrease. But when you have to interpret it is when you just have to slow down and really ask yourself, how much is something decreasing by? Well, we look forward to some great practice in our last night of sequences and series. Have a good one.